Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be adding player health so that our player can actually die. And then I'm gonna show you how to create melee animations for your player, and then we're gonna do death animations for both the player and for the zombie, because right now, uh, the zombies just disappear, which is uh, pretty boring. So to start out with, I wanna add health to Adventure Girl here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over to make a variable, and I'm gonna create a variable called player health. And once I create this variable, we have our player health set to zero. So now the first thing we want to do is when the game starts, we want to set her health to some value. And so what we're going to do is go to events and grab a when we click start. And then in controls, or sorry, in variables, we're going to start with set our player health to, and we're going to start with, I'm going to start with two is my number. We're going to set player health to two. And then now, now we have our player health and we click start, it gets set to two. The next thing we need to do is we need to repeatedly check if we're touching a zombie. And if we are touching a zombie, we're going to change her health by minus one. So I'm going to go over to controls and then I'm going to put in a forever loop. And then we're going to say, if we are touching a zombie, if we're touching a zombie, then we're going to change her health by minus one, change player health by minus one. Okay, good. So let's try that out real quick. And what we're gonna see is that this works, except, oop, nope, that does not work. So what's happening is if you notice, if you walk into her, her health goes down to zero and then it just keeps going into these negatives really, really fast. Um, and that's happening because this if statement, this forever runs once every frame of the game. We probably don't want zombies to be able to do damage to her every single frame. We probably want them to do one damage and then they have to like wait a second and then they do a little bit more damage, like they're attacking her a little more slowly over time. So we can fix that pretty easily. We'll just add in a wait one second here after we do the damage. And so now when we run into our zombie, we do one damage, we do another damage, but it waits one second before doing the next piece of damage. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is let our player die when they actually get to zero or less health. So to do that, what we're gonna do is add a little check in here to see if our player health is less than zero inside this big forever loop that has all of our other checks. Um, and one thing to note is that that's gonna happen first. This if statement, we're gonna check if they have less than zero health is gonna be the very first thing to happen because we wanna check if they're actually dead before we let them do things like jump and move. So to do that, we have this if statement here, and then we're gonna say if our player health is less than uh, one, if our player health is less than one, that means there's zero or less, then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna switch her costume to her first death animation. So it's called dead one. And if you look here, we have dead one through dead 10 is our last one. So we'll say switch costume to dead one, and then we're gonna repeat over all those other animations. So we're going to say repeat nine, and we're going to say switch to next costume. So next costume. So now if I start this and we run into our zombie, perfect, uh, kind of, except she keeps doing it over and over again. So the reason she keeps doing it is because there's nothing to tell the, this, this loop to stop running once the player's down. Like, so it gets here, it says switch costume to dead one, it repeats her next costumes, but then it just ends this and it goes back into this big forever loop here and starts back at the beginning, her health is still less than one, it does this again, it exits, it goes back to the top and so on forever. So what we need to do is if she's dead, we need it to stop running this loop. And there's a lot of different ways we can do this, but the way I'm gonna start with is uh, we're gonna go into control here and we're gonna grab a wait until and right when we finish running her death animations, we're gonna say wait until uh, our player health is greater than zero. So until she gets all of her health back, we're gonna have her stay in that last costume, the, the dead 10 costume. So actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, wait until our player health is greater than zero. So if it's one or more, if our player health is greater than zero, then uh, it'll, so we'll wait until that's true. And then when it is true, it'll go back into running this whole loop. And then it won't immediately run this again because that would have to only be if it's less than one. So if we start this, you'll see that we run into our zombie and then we go down and we stay down, which is what we want. Uh, the next thing I wanna fix is that when we click start here, you're gonna notice she, does, she dies like immediately here. Like watch this. She dies, we click start and she dies again. And then she stands like right back up, like nothing happened. And so the reason that's happening is because scratch picks just as far as I can tell, an arbitrary order to run these in. So when the game first starts, it will start with one, it will pick one of these scripts to run, one of these three scripts to run first. And it seems like what it's doing is it's picking to run this one where we, where we do her death animation before it sets her player health to two. And so to fix that, we just need to tell this one to wait a frame. So we have time for these two scripts to run before this one starts running. And so to do that, we can go into our control 
and we can wrap, grab a wait, and we can just have it wait zero seconds. And that's gonna make it wait just, just a frame longer so that these two have a chance to run and we get a chance to actually set her health before we start actually doing her animations. So now, um, if we die real quick, and then we hit start again, you're gonna notice that she doesn't do that anymore. Now when we click start, she just stays upright, which is what we wanted. The next thing I wanna do is add in her melee animations. And so to do her melee animations, first thing I wanna do is go to her costumes and find where her melee animations are. So it looks like they are, we have, they're right here, we have melee one, and we have a couple, we have melee two, three, four, five, and six, seven. Okay, so we have seven melee animations, and it goes through this animation of her swinging her knife. And so to do that, we're gonna add in, just like we've done for all these other animations, we're gonna add in another if statement. We are going to say if the player is touching, uh, if the player is pressing a certain key, and you can pick whatever key you want, but I'm gonna pick C. Um, so if the player is touching the C key, then we're gonna do her animation. So we'll start by setting our costume to melee one. So we'll switch costume to melee one. And then we just wanna repeat over all of those other melee costumes she has. So let's go ahead into uh, our control and grab a repeat. And then just like we did for the death costumes, we're just gonna go to the next costume. And we're gonna do it six times because she has seven total melee costumes. So we're gonna, we started at one, we're gonna do a one, two, three, four, five, six uh, to get all the rest of those costumes. So now when we click start and we press C, you'll see she does her, she does her melee. One thing that I want to do just for my own game is I, I want to be able, I want her to melee in the direction my mouse is, not the direction she's facing. So if my mouse is over here and she's facing to the right, if my mouse is on the left and she's facing to the right, I want the melee attack to happen to the left because that's easier, I think, than having to use the arrow keys to, to turn her. And so to do that, what I'm going to do is we're just, it's, it's real easy. I'm just going to grab a uh, point in direction uh, mouse pointer. And then this is gonna flip her around. When we press C, it's gonna check which direction her our mouse pointer is, and it's gonna flip her in that direction. So now when I click start, if she's facing to the left, but I click C on this side, it'll turn her in whatever direction I want. So now we have her melee animation. Uh, it doesn't do damage to the zombies yet. Uh, in fact, when you hit the zombie, it actually does damage to her because it's touching her sprite, um, which is not what we want. Uh, that's something we're gonna cover in the next video when we get to hit boxes and stuff. For the rest of this video, I'm just gonna cover how to create the zombies death animations. Um, and then in the next video, we'll talk about how to actually create the hitboxes to have melee do damage. So now to create the zombie death animations, I'm gonna go over here to our zombie. And all the stuff I'm gonna add is gonna be right here in this forever loop before we do all the zombie exposition movement stuff. So I'm gonna start with a check, just like Adventure Girls actually, where we say if our zombie's health is less than if our zombie's health is less than a certain amount, if our zombie's health is less than one. So if our zombie health is less than one, we'll start right here at the very top. That should be the very first thing in this loop. So if our zombie health is less than one, we will switch our costume to zombie, the zombie's first death animation. So switch to dead one. And then same as Adventure Girl, we're gonna repeat this for however many uh, costumes they have. So we're gonna go to our control, and we're gonna grab a repeat, and we're gonna repeat for each one of these costumes. So it looks like we have 12 total, so we're already on one, so that's 11. We're gonna repeat 11 times. We're going to switch to next costume. So if we look at what that looks like real quick, we start our game, and we shoot the zombie, and oh no, they still disappear. Why did they just disappear? So it turns out you can't have the delete clone stay here. The problem is this delete clone now, now that we're doing their death animation, we can't let it go delete them off in another piece of code. So what we're gonna do is after we finish running their death animations, then we're gonna delete the clone once the death animations have, have finished. So now if we click start, now if we click start, they die instantly. And the reason they die instantly is the exact same reason that our adventure girl was dying right at the beginning. And that's because when we click start, this piece of code, this start as clone, runs before we set the zombie's health. And so if you remember, the way we fixed that before is we just added in a wait zero, and that just delays the zombies, that just delays this piece of code one frame, so that this has a chance to run first. So now when we click start, our zombie's upright, when we shoot them four times, there we go, they die. That looks good. One, two, three, four. Perfect, it looks beautiful. Uh, the other thing I like to add for the zombie death animations is uh, this sort of pixelating and ghosting effect so they don't just vanish when they fall on the ground. So to do that, what I usually do is I grab a repeat 10 and we'll put it before the delete clone. So the delete clone should go, the delete clone should go at the very end. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go into our looks here 
and we're gonna grab a uh, change and we're gonna change their, first we're gonna change their pixelate effect, so they're gonna like sort of pixel out by 10. And then we're going to also change their uh, ghost effect, so they sort of fade out also by 10. And so what this will look like then when we actually start this code again, and whoop, where's our zombie? There they are. And run it, is when we do the fourth shot, they sort of like pixel out. So if you watch that again, she so she sort of she sort of falls, but then she like fades out. She pixels and fades out, which I think looks a lot better than just vanishing. That's all for this video. In the next one, we're gonna talk about how to make this melee animation actually do damage to our zombie using hitboxes, and we're also gonna fix this bug where I can jump up and stand on the zombie's head because I think that looks ridiculous.